Hello friends, welcome to Noonish Prayer for Monday, October the 19th. I'm glad to see you today, those of you who are tuning in and those who will uh, watch later. I want to take um, a few moments of uh, perhaps we should call them personal privilege here and uh, by way of announcements explain some things that are going on. I don't know how much you all will have heard. Um, I suspect that I know how news travels and so you may have heard quite a bit, but let me just try to update you. You may well know, I hope you know, that our Synod is meeting in its annual assembly. Uh, we met this past weekend and we will meet again next weekend uh, in a virtual assembly this year, meeting all on, in a Zoom type platform. This is also the year that Bishop Zeiser will be retiring and so we have the task of electing a new bishop of the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. The process for electing a bishop uh, goes like this. Uh, we begin with an ecclesiastical ballot, which is a nominating ballot, so that on the first ballot, the name of any rostered minister of word and sacrament in the ELCA, it doesn't have to even be from this synod, but any rostered minister in the ELCA, um, can, their name can be written down and go into the second ballot. There is an opportunity then for people to remove names. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. So um, I was nominated by five individuals in our synod uh, to be the next bishop. There was then a process by which one was allowed to remove one's name from consideration. And it had to be done. The only time you can remove your name from consideration is before the second ballot. I did not remove my name from consideration, not because I feel particularly that I um, am strongly feeling called to be the next bishop, but I also know that um, I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to do that discerning, and so I left my name on the ballot. The second ballot was cast, then uh, I forget I, I believe it was it was yesterday afternoon. Um, I'm afraid time has blurred a little bit for me. And the way it works, the nominees who move to the third ballot for bishop are the seven individuals plus ties who receive the most votes. Now there were, uh, I believe, 78 people that were nominated on the first ballot. Um, quite a number of them removed their names from consideration, so there were 19 names, including mine, on the second ballot. And as I said, the top seven vote-getters move on to the third ballot. I was the seventh uh, highest vote count, so my name is going on to be considered on the third ballot for bishop. What this means for me is, well, frankly, a lot of I don't knows. Uh, what I do know is I had, I had planned to take today off uh, because it was a, a very busy weekend, and uh, but I'm not taking the day off because I am working on some paperwork and some preparation now because um, I will be recorded tomorrow afternoon giving a two-minute introduction of myself by video to the assembly. And then I will be asked a series of questions which I will need to answer uh, for them to videotape so that all seven nominees uh, responses can be shared with the assembly. I don't know what those questions are. So um, while I can prepare my introduction and I need to prepare my written biographical information, um, I really can't prepare too much for answering those questions because none of us knows what they are. Those videos will be available for people from the Synod to watch on Friday. Um, then there will be Mission District caucusing on Saturday morning and late Saturday morning the next vote, the next ballot for Bishop will be presented. Um, and then from there, unless there is an election, unless one person receives enough votes at that point. I don't remember the percentage, but unless enough people receive 
enough votes on that ballot, there will be a fourth ballot and uh, the top three vote getters will move on to that ballot. Um, th this is all completely overwhelming to me. Um, I am in a period of intense discernment right now. Um, I'm just needing to trust that the spirit will lead me and get me to the place that I need to be and will move in the assembly to elect the next bishop of the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod. I would like to say that because I was a fairly distant seventh of the top seven candidates that I probably don't have anything to worry about, but I don't know that to be the case. Uh, I don't know that that's, uh, I, I do know that that's not generally how the Holy Spirit works. So why am I telling you all of this? Well, first of all, because you need to know. Uh, second of all, because I invite your prayerful support at this time. This is unlike anything that I have uh, gone through before and probably unlike anything I will go through again in the future. Um, I ask you to pray, please don't pray, that I will not be elected uh, because you don't want to lose me as your pastor. Uh, please don't pray that I be elected, but pre please pray instead that the Holy Spirit will make it clear to the people of the Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod who the next bishop should be. And please pray for me for help and for guidance in this time. I'm not sure there's anything else I'm capable of saying at this time. So thank you in advance for your prayerful support. And uh, we'll, we'll obviously keep you posted. But now, the real reason you tuned in today was for noonish prayer. And so let us, let us proceed now to pray. As I bid to you peace, the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our scripture reading for today is Psalm 90, and I read it to you in the translation that is found in our hymnal. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born from age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past and like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning, it is green and flourishes. In the evening, it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger. We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities you have set before you, you and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. 
The span of our life is 70 years, perhaps in strength even 80. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your steadfast love in the morning, so shall we rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you afflicted us, and as many years as we suffered adversity. Show your servants your works and your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands. Prosper our handiwork. Here ends the lesson. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again, and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. I invite you now, in this brief time of silence, to lift your own petitions of intercession and thanksgiving before God. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your most gracious favor, and extend to us your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your name. And finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God of all people, your ways are higher than any earthly ruler, and your righteousness is truer than any worldly judge. Align our hearts with your justice, that in this upcoming election we would commit to making decisions based on the needs of the poor and oppressed in our midst, and our stewardship of all that you have made. Open the minds of our leaders, that they too will show concern for the needy, and compassion towards those in distress. Unite us all around the cross, pledging our utmost allegiance to the slaughtered Lamb, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak and help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.